The Alliance aligned company Lacon Spaceways has been bought out by the Federation aligned mega corporation Core Dynamics. In this video we're going to delve into what this might mean and why Frontier might be pursuing this storyline. If you enjoy this video remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and if you'd like to support our work you'll also find us on Patreon. Links to everything you need are in the description below. With the rebirth of Galnet late last year the in-game news service took on a new importance in the universe of Elite Dangerous. Where Galnet had previously predominantly been a way for Frontier to inject colour and backstory into the game with little or no changes actually appearing as a result of the preceding Galnet article it now serves as a herald for actual events and additions to the game world. If something is being talked about on Galnet it's because it has changed or been added or it's going to change or be added. Further to this Frontier have reiterated a number of times that the threads running on Galnet are all for a reason. They will have resonance in the game beyond simple text. A couple of years ago the buying of one mega corporation by another mega corporation in the universe of Elite Dangerous would have been largely ignorable with no measurable consequences. In the brave new world of Elite and Galnet and with a large expansion just around the corner the fictional corporate shenanigans have a purpose. There has to be a reason that Frontier is choosing to play out this storyline. So what's the reason? Core Dynamics and Lacon Spaceways are both predominantly ship manufacturers. Core Dynamics is federation aligned and mostly produces out and out combat vessels and capital ships. They also own Vodal, the company behind the venerable service recon vehicle. The most obvious answer is therefore the introduction of a new ship or ships but that wouldn't necessarily require the storyline to make it happen. A new ship could be easily introduced without the need for the boardroom battling backstory. If you wanted to remove a ship or two from sale however that could be excused with the introduction of new ownership to the company. Before the panic sets in this doesn't suddenly mean your highly engineered type 9 or chieftain is going to disappear from your inventory one day but it might mean that a ship that Frontier deems surplus to requirements or something that is going to be made largely obsolete by the introduction of a new ship could possibly be unavailable for new purchases. It's never happened before but it's not outside the realms of possibility. The introduction of a new ship Something that combines the best of both companies wealth of experience and knowledge that could also be a possibility. I can hear you saying Panther Clipper already. Traditionally the Clipper has been a product of the Zorgon Peterson Design Bureau but this is Frontiers game. They can make the Clipper a Lacon Core Dynamics joint product if they so desire. Whilst a new ship or ships is an obvious answer to the question we're wrestling with here it does ignore the larger implications of what Frontier is doing with this story thread. Recently the Alliance has been jabbing at the Thargoids with a pointy stick. This is particularly interesting when you note that Professor Ishmael Palin the notable formerly Federation aligned Thargoid prodder left his base in the Maya system after the Thargoids got annoyed with him and he ended up at a new facility in the Alliance controlled ARC system. That's a significant amount of Thargoid knowledge in the hands of the Alliance. When the Adamaster megaship appeared on Halloween last year after a 200 year drift in the black having encountered the Thargoids in the Colsac Nebula and we believe having recovered something Thargoid from that encounter it was intercepted by Alliance operatives who boarded the vessel and afterward reported that there was nothing of interest on board. That would seem to be, let's be kind, inaccurate. The result would appear to be more Thargoid knowledge in the hands of the Alliance. Lacon is the only company in the game that currently produces dedicated anti-Thargoid ships and it is, or at least it was, Alliance aligned. It's a safe bet that whatever the Alliance knows about Thargoids Lacon also now knows. Not only would that information be of value to Core Dynamics and by association the Federation 
but removing that knowledge and expertise from the Alliance who have been recently actively annoying the Thargoids leaves them extremely vulnerable. The Alliance has no rep gain grind available for players to use, no ships locked behind that grind. If the Thargoids attacked and the Alliance were significantly hurt or even wiped off the map it wouldn't have a significant impact on players ability to gain or use any ships or equipment but it would make for a nice fairly consequence free Thargoid kicking post in the game. It's likely power play is the only area that would see significant changes as a result of serious impacts on the Alliance's presence in the galaxy. So do I think the Alliance is about to become food for the Thargoidal young? Not necessarily but the lack of a rep grind in the Alliance does set them apart currently and now they have no ship manufacturer of their own that might demand a future rep grind. At least not yet. So what are your thoughts on all this? Is the new mega corporation of Lacon Dynamics about to unleash a panther variant on the galaxy? Are the middle of the road habitual fence sitters in the Alliance about to get a swift injection of catastrophic xenophobia and why respect for one's galactic neighbours is always important? Sound off in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.